I did everything that I was told to do, followed the formulas, followed the program, but the scripture doesn't say if we stand with God, if we submit to God, if we resist the devil, and then we point at the cycle and call it bondage, and we try to address only the symptom and not the source. You're also highlighting deception in the church. And the elephant in the room then is, can a Christian have a demon? So when someone is battling with bondage, maybe it's even demon possession, or if they want to walk in the authority of Jesus Christ, there is one book, and I'm being completely honest, there's one book I recommend and put in their hands, and it's this one, Holy Spirit, The Bondage Breaker, and I have the author with me here, David Diga Hernandez, so good to have you on Encounter today, man. My friend, it's a joy. Thanks for thinking of me uh, to be here. And crashing the party, we got Larry Smarts, yes. who I made stay with me here on the podcast. Pr proud publisher of the book. So. Proud publisher yeah. of the book, Destiny Image. And Grateful. we want to have a conversation with you because I was just talking with actually Rick Renner. And it, we can name drop at NRB because you're, you're actually just talking with someone amazing. And I was talking about you and I said, in regard to the deliverance movement, this book, it brought, a, it, it removed a works-based mentality. Yes. Why did you feel the need to write this? Because there was a sense of urgency when I read through this book. Why did you feel the need to write it? Well, I know that in my own experience, I had battled heavily with depression and anxiety. And I battled with depression and anxiety as a preacher. Not as, you know, again, we, we sometimes can be dismissive of people and say, well, you know, as you grow, you'll just kind of get it down. But it's not just, freedom is not just a matter of existing in the kingdom of God for a long time. It's a matter of knowing the truth, believing that truth, and living in that truth. Yeah. Jesus said, you shall know the truth, and the truth shall set you free. So then that means, if I am still bound, there's a truth I've yet to embrace. All spiritual defeat is grounded in spiritual deception. Huh. And so I myself had attempted to be free. I did everything that I was told to do, followed the formulas, followed the program, even taught and preached some of it. And again, not all of it is a bad thing. Right. I don't wanna I, I don't wanna seem like sure. I'm just indicting an entire movement that I, I'm a part. We're thankful for. Yes, yeah. absolutely. And I and I pra I say this as one who practices deliverance. I believe it's for today. I practice exorcism, I believe it's for today. Um, but there are subtle nuances in our misalignment with the word of God that yield results that can often be legalistic in nature. So what I was battling was a very deeply rooted stronghold, a lie that I believe deep on the inside that was producing all of these different results that we would call spiritual bondage. If I were to sit here and tell you, and if they're listening on audio, for reference, I'm wearing a black jacket. But if I were to tell you, Alan, this is a brown jacket, you would look right at you and go, no, I don't believe you. But if you were listening to the audio, I could say it. So then a lie doesn't become deception until you believe it. Mm. I can lie to someone. And if they don't believe that lie, then that doesn't count as deception. Deception is when you believe a lie, you just don't know you do, which is why it's so difficult to break. And so what happens is the lie becomes deception. Deception begins to affect your thoughts. Thoughts lead to thought patterns. Thought patterns lead to feelings and actions. Feeling and Feelings and actions lead to habits, habits become cycles, and then we point at the cycle and call it bondage, and we try to address only the symptom and not the source. And so this is what I was doing. I was trying to address the bad feelings. I was trying to address yeah. that heaviness that yeah. was on me. And I recognized that so it was just wasn't budging. It wasn't moving. Nothing was happening in the way that I thought it should. It wasn't until I discovered the biblical concept of knowing and believing the truth that I ultimately experienced freedom. But going back to the original question as to why I sense the urgency, you had touched on it just a moment ago. Often, the things that we teach lead to legalism. Now, what is legalism? We, we kind of throw that around as an end. Sorry, well, you're just legalist. Yeah. And often, legalist is what we label someone who believes in holiness when we're convicted of our own sin. Uh, so I don't, mean, I don't mean it in that sense. Uh, but well, holiness, obviously, is a good thing. Uh, but, but legalism, by biblical definition, is simply man's attempt to do what only God can do. Yeah. In other words, wow. man trying to shoulder the burden of what is God's responsibility. Yes. And so what begins to happen is we try to, through ritual, through practice, through certain belief systems, we try to enact and participate in the supernatural aspect of our deliverance when it's not in a specialized prayer, unless the Holy Spirit leads you to pray a certain way. It's not in a very specific ritual. It's not in a very specific method. 
It's in coming back to the basics of the word, trusting God. What does the scripture say? Resist the devil and he will flee. Not he will fight, he will flee. Mm. Often we say things like this and we say it in a way that is almost this form of uh, being puffed up and we don't even realize it. We say, well, the devil's only attacking me because he knows how big of a threat I am. Mm. But bullies don't attack threats. Bullies attack people who don't know they're a threat. And so we say that, but the scripture doesn't say if we stand with God, if we submit to God, if we resist the devil, that he'll come at us harder. It says we resist the devil, he will flee. And so you resist the devil how? It tells us submit to God. And that submission to God, not just in our actions, but in our thinking, is what ultimately brings forth that freedom. Consistent obedience over time to the Word of God is the key to deliverance. Yes. And you can tell by listening to this, there's so much packed into every... I wanted to interrupt you every 30 seconds and say, wait, 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 hold on one second. Let's, and that's why everybody needs to get the book. And we're going to put a link in the description for everybody to get a hold of it. Larry, why did you see the need to publish this book? We know and we publish a lot of different perspectives on deliverance, to be totally honest. But, you know, as we were just talking in this conversation, the Lord brought to my attention Matthew 24. And Matthew 24 is the famous portion where Jesus outlines what we can expect in the last days. And it's interesting. He could have said anything as the first thing that we need to be aware of. Right. But you know the first thing J Jesus said when describing the last days? Do not be deceived. Yeah. And obviously we think of antichrist ideologies and we think of false narratives and all this stuff going around in our culture right now. As we're talking, I think to myself, Holy Spirit, you're also highlighting deception in the church. Deception that we as believers are believing, maybe even concerning things like deliverance and spiritual warfare. If we're believing a lie about those types of things, we are going to be so hijacked as a people that all this stuff coming against us from the outside is going to permeate and have effect. So Matthew 24, do not be deceived. I believe that this book is written for such a time as this. Yeah, and I'm absolutely 100% honest when I say, if I find somebody battling with oppression, this is the book that I give them. Yep. Now, before this, it would have been a Lester Summerall book that I would give them. And that's, that's, that's high praise. That's a huge compliment. I'm, I'm, I believe that. And the elephant in the room then is, so everybody make sure you're listening because you're about to get the answer to this question. Can a Christian have a demon as generic as and 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 uh, vague as that statement is? What's your response to that? So my response would be first to figure out what they mean by have a demon. Mm, yes. If by have a demon you mean that you're being attacked, tempted, deceived, tormented, then yes, in that sense, Christians can have a demon. But if by have a demon you're describing what is normally known as demonization, right. uh, then you're referring to what the Greek would call daimonizomai. Mm -hmm. Daimonizomai occurs 13 times in the Gospels. And every single time that it's used, it's a reference to the habitation of a demonic being inside of you. Now, in the book, I go into greater detail as to why this cannot be. And sometimes when we say that the Holy Spirit cannot um, habitate a place where a demonic being dwells, uh, people often say, well, that's an argument from emotion. But the reason it's not an argument from emotion is because we're not just saying they can't cohabitate because we don't like the idea. Mm. But I'm talking about the intrinsic nature of the Holy Spirit mm. in that his existence by its very nature would necessitate the absence of the other. Mm. And so you see the way that demonic beings would respond anytime they saw the indwelling presence of God. I heard another great um, point. People often send me questions on this when they're kind of working through yeah. that belief and finally coming uh, away from that. They said, what do you think about this? What do you think about this? A, a really good one I thought was really well thought out was this idea, or is it, it, was, it was put very philosophically like this. Well, you know, if the Holy Spirit is everywhere and demons cannot be where the Holy Spirit dwells, then demons couldn't be anywhere because the Holy Spirit is everywhere. And it's, okay. it's, a, it's a really well thought out, again, it's very philosophical, but it fails to take into account the fact that the Bible delineates between the omnipresence of God, Psalm 139, yes. 7, and the indwelling presence of the Holy Spirit that we experience as new believers. No one would say that a non-believer has the Holy Spirit in the same way that the believer has. And you just have to Roman, reference Romans chapter 8, verse 9 to see that. We, we have the Holy Spirit's presence in a unique, heightened way. I think mm. that's the best way I can describe it. And we see how demons respond to that heightened influence of the Holy Spirit. Yes. Anytime the indwelling presence of the Holy Spirit through the carrier that was Christ would walk around, that that demon would, would manifest and be tormented mm. by the nearness of that type of manifestation. Mm. So, there, I mean, I go through dozens of things like this in the book. Yes. So again, if you're talking about a demon coming against someone, absolutely. 
and I often say Christians do need deliverance, but if you're talking about exorcism, where a demon dwells in them, the Bible is very clear that that is referred to as possession. It's what the writers of the New Testament were trying to communicate when they use that word daimonizomai. So you have to look at the original text and what is the plain meaning of the scripture? What was it that was in the mind of the writer when they wrote this? And even when you reference all of the Greek lexicons, I shouldn't say all, maybe very few would have a different definition, but you look at some of the gold standards like BDAG or you look at Strong's, it very clearly says to be possessed by an evil spirit. Some might say, well, Demons don't own anything, but John 8, 44, Jesus tells the Pharisees that they belong mm. to their father, the devil. So, but I mean, there's lots we could go through, but again, it depends by what you mean by have a demon. Yeah. If by have a demon, you mean that the demon dwells in them. No, Christians can't have a demon. If by have a demon, you mean that Christians can be attacked, tempted, deceived, tormented from the outside, then in that sense, yes, I would say so. I'm going to ask you to pray here in a moment. I know this is weird at NRB and with all the hubbub going on around us, but I, I feel an anointing yeah, as you're sure. sharing right now. And there's like this sense that a weight's being lifted. Everything you share, every page you go through in this book, it's like, ah, oh, wow, another weight is lifted, another bondage yeah, is right. Moved. Just through the revelation of truth. Before we pray, Larry, is there anything else you want to say about, about this book? Well, uh, all I can think of is David's practical ministry and what he's talking about how when the Holy Spirit comes into collision with a person and that person is either demon possessed, they do not know the Lord, or demonized, tormented, they're a believer but they are tormented. The good news is when the Holy Spirit comes into proximity to them, just like you see in your meetings, because your meetings are all about hosting the Holy, Holy Spirit. Spirit. And you were saying that there's, a, I, I sense that anointing and piercing right now, brother, in that the folks who are watching who either don't know the Lord or who have been tormented by the demonic, I believe liberation is going to happen because they're going to experience the manifestation of the presence of the Spirit, like you see in meetings week after week, every time you guys come together. So Liberation and empowerment. Yeah. Yes. Even as we're here on the floor of the NRB, there are people who don't know that they have authority over the things that they're battling against. Yeah. And I don't mean to put you on the spot, but would you be willing to pray for us right now? Absolutely. That's the Spirit of God leads. And I just want to say before we, before we do, I, I, I want to remind the viewer... But the only power that the enemy can have over you is the power he can deceive you in giving to him. Yes. Once you recognize who you are in Christ, yeah. you'll begin to see greater is he who is in me, the Bible makes a distinction, than he that is in the world. So, Father, I thank you. Thank you, Lord. That by your Holy Spirit, you are illuminating your word. Yes, Jesus. And by your Holy Spirit, you are bringing forth truth. Lord. And I pray, precious Holy Spirit, even now, that that one receiving now would begin to sense the nearness of your mm. person. Thank you that you are looking at them right now. Thank you that you are in the room with them right now. Let them sense that enveloping of your glorious presence. Let them sense your love and peace overflowing. I thank you, precious Lord, that bondages of the mind are being shattered yes. in the mighty name of Jesus. We give you all the glory, the honor, and the praise, Lord. We give you all the praise. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. If you're receiving that, just write, I receive in the comments right now. And listen to me. The best thing you could do today, other than getting in the Word of God, is get this book. The link is in the description. Get it for your friends. Have, have multiple copies available because it's liberating for whatever stage of life you're in, whether you're battling with bondage or you just want, want to walk in greater authority or a greater relationship with the Holy Spirit. Yeah. David Digger Hernandez, thank you so much. My joy. What a blessing. If you believe we have crashed craft, uh, stated earlier, do we have the bodies of the pilots who piloted this craft? As I've stated publicly already in my News Nation interview, uh, biologics came with some of these recoveries, yeah. Were they, I guess, human or non-human biologics? He asked me point blank, have you read your Bible lately? And I said, well, sir, I think I know what it says. And he said, well, then you would know that these things are, are demonic. My God. And it turns out that actually, yes, these things have been shot down and crashed and the U.S. government has the wreckage. There's just no question that some of the reports seem to tell of uh, the sort of thing that you find in poltergeist phenomena. I mean, with artificial intelligence, we are summoning a demon. 